Do you want to know the easiest way to monitor temperature without Wi-Fi or Bluetooth? In this video, we're going to be building a fully wireless temperature monitor using LoRa and ESP32, and there's no internet needed. In this video, we'll be using the ESP32-S3. We'll be using two RYLR998 LoRa modules, a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor, a breadboard, the RYLS135 level shifter, and some jumper wires to make our connections. This project is perfect for outdoor camps, off-grid cabins, barns, or anywhere Wi-Fi doesn't reach. And with Laura's long range and low power, you can monitor conditions at any remote spot without even needing the internet. This is the Rayx RYLS135 level shifter. And you can think of it as a couple different things. It's a USB to UART serial converter, which means we can use our computer to talk to devices like sensors or LoRa radios. It's also a 4-bit bi-directional voltage level shifter that can convert USB signals to UART and also translate voltage levels between 1.8, 3.3, and 5 volt on its input-output lines. And you can also use it as a bridge to help you see data from devices. And in our case today, we're going to use it to see the data from our RYLR998 LoRa modules directly on our computer. And you may be asking yourself, well, why would I even need this? Well, it's convenient. You don't need a microcontroller on the receiver side. You just plug it into your PC's USB and you use a serial monitor, like in our case, the Arduino IDE, to read the LoRa data. And so for us, it's gonna allow us to see what's being transmitted from the ESP32 LoRa setups with the temperature and humidity DHT11 sensors. And it's great for just testing, debugging, and learning about serial communication in general. The RYLS135 is a voltage level shifter that makes it safe and easy to connect two UART devices that use different voltages. The board has two sides. There's a side A connected through the CON5 header and a side B connected through the TX, RX, RTS, and CTS header pins. You choose the operating voltage for each side using jumpers. The CON3 jumper sets the voltage for side A or CON5 and the CON2 jumper sets the voltage for side B which are the header pins. And if you remove the jumpers on CON5, the board works as an active level shifter, and that safely translates between two different voltages. Here I set the multimeter to DC volts, and I connect the black probe to the ground pin, and use the red probe to touch the UART signal pins one at a time, so that I could read the voltage on the screen. To show you an example of how this level shifter changes voltage levels, I started by removing the jumpers on CON5, which disconnect the A side signal pins from the level shifter, then I set the voltage jumper on CON3 to 1.8 volt and CON2 to 1.8 volt as well and use the multimeter to test the voltage on the header pins, the TX, RX, and so on. They all showed 1.8 volt as expected. And after that I changed the CON3 jumpers to 3.3 volt and the CON2 jumpers to 5 volt. When I tested the header pins again I saw that the A side connected through CON5 had 3.3 volt and the B side header pins, the TX and RX, had 5 volt. And this confirmed that the board correctly shifts voltages between the two different logic levels depending on the jumper settings. Next to the UART pins you have some power output pins. You have a 5 volt, a 3.3 volt, and 1.8 volt. If you're using these power output pins keep in mind that the 5 and 3.3 volt pins have a typical output current of 500 milliamp while the 1.8 volt pin has a typical output of 100 milliamp. Today I'm keeping all the CON5 jumpers in place and I've set the CON3 to 3.3 volt which means both sides of the board including the header pins on the B side they'll operate at 3.3 volt and this will be useful because our LoRa module also operates at 3.3 volt. Here's a diagram of the transmitter that I'm using. The temperature and humidity sensor is connected to pin 5 and ground of the ESP32 while the data pin is connected to pin 4. For the LoRa, the TX and RX pins are 16 and 17. It's also connected to 3.3 volt pin on the ESP32 and common ground. For the receiver, I just plug the level shifter into the computer and I connect TX to RX and RX to TX. Here's the code I'll be using. In the setup section, it initializes the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor and it sets up the LoRa module with the correct parameters. In the loop section, the ESP32 reads the temperature and humidity from the DHT11 sensor, and if the readings are valid, it formats the uh, data as a string and sends it over LoRa using the uh, AT send command. And it also prints to the serial monitor for monitoring or plotting. But if the sensor fails to give a reading, it'll go ahead and send an error message, and the loop runs every five seconds. 
Here I brought the transmitter out to the garage. It's pretty hot in here, and I uh, just have it set up the same way I did uh, as I was putting it together. It's connected to a breadboard, and I plugged it into the wall. So it's just hanging out here, taking temperature and humidity, and transmitting it to my other LoRa module, which is plugged into my computer. Here I have the level shifter plugged directly into the computer and the lore module connected directly to that. There's no need for a microcontroller. I'm going to use the computer to open up the uh, serial monitor on the Arduino IDE so that we can see the data that's coming in from the garage. Once everything's plugged in and you open up the serial display, you should start seeing the data coming in. This data has a timestamp on the left and you see plus RCV equals 2. This is the sender's address. Then you see the number 20, that's the number of bytes in the message payload. Next you see the temperature and humidity. This is the actual message content and that is the payload. It's about 20 bytes. Next we see uh, minus 60, that's a receive signal strength indicator. So a value like minus 60 is very good signal strength. The closer to zero, the stronger the signal. This can obviously reach very long distances, but this is just coming from the garage. So the signal is going to be very good. Next we see the number 11. This is the SNR or signal to noise ratio and a higher SNR means a cleaner signal so any value over zero is good. One thing you can do is open the serial plotter in the IDE but it's not going to save your graph by default. It's basically for real-time visualization. Uh, it's not going to store your data to file. It's not going to keep your history once you close down the IDE and it cannot export the graph as an image or data file. You can use a serial monitor to copy and paste the output manually into an Excel spreadsheet and create the graph that way, but the easiest way, if you're using Windows, is to download Python for Windows and then install a serial library like PySerial and then just write a simple script that logs data from serial. But that is a video for another day. That's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it by clicking the thumbs up and consider subscribing if you enjoy this type of stuff. Also, share it with somebody else who may find it useful, and I'll see you again with another video.